Kichichiro, a Japanese Christian bound and tempted to step on an image of Christ to save his own life. His family, next in line, watch as he presses his dirty foot onto the silent bronze face of Christ. Released by the Japanese, he runs off with the howl and snap of his family burning for their faith. This is the central focus of Martin Scorsese's silence. Not specifically Kichichiro, though he recurs throughout the film and, and so does his consistent dance between repentance and rejection. But the film looks at the nature of faith, stripping its characters of everything but the beating of their hearts, and asks, without the support of the church, without the comforts of home, without even the voice or presence of God, can the silence of faith persist amongst cruelty? Silence lays hands on its audience, dragging them along a journey that tests the antiseptic, abstract theology of two young 17th century Jesuit priests. They naively search Japan for their missing teacher, Father Ferreira, who is rumored to have apothecized or publicly rejected the faith. Without spoiling the film too much, Scorsese composes an experience of rich beauty and decay, of intellectually honest arguments on both the merits and the cultural arrogance of bringing the gospel to Japan. The Japanese are portrayed as both brutal murderers of their Christian countrymen, or as analytical patriots, committed to expelling this Christian distortion of their ancient culture. The Kichichiro character demonstrates the complexity of faith. He continually rejects Christ out of what he calls his own weakness. Andrew Garfield's father Rodriguez eventually comes to despise Kichichiro, especially after he betrays him to the Japanese Inquisitor. Yet, while wrestling with his own disgust for Kichichiro, Rodriguez offers the words of forgiveness, playing his role, acting out in faith for forgiveness that he cannot understand. Understanding soon comes for the priest, however, when he is locked in a cell with five apostatized Japanese Christians hanging upside down, their heads buried in dark pits, each with a single slit cut in their necks to let a trickling ribbon of blood drip, drip, drip into their pits for hours. And as they moan and hiss, Rodriguez wrestles in prayer, begging for God to speak to this cruelty. Yet. Silence is Rodriguez's only companion. And as Rodriguez is offered the choice to save the tortured Christians by apostatizing, we realize that Christ suffered horribly to absolve even those who would partake in this public formality. The film reduces faith to the intensity of the internal, to the silence of a single mind alone. It's claustrophobic and frustrating for Rodriguez. And as his foot hangs above an image of Christ, he is forced to ask whether his faith can withstand the silence of being entirely hidden now from his public life. And we are forced to ask whether faith can flourish in the presence of a silent God.